Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 36 of the platform specific series of my Z80 programming tutorials. Now we looked last time at how to play digital sounds on the AY sound chip. We're going to be looking at the AY again, but it's in a very different context this time. We're going to look at how the Amstrad CPC Plus can use its DMA to play digital sounds without using the Z80 processor really at all. So this allows us to play sounds while doing other things and this can make our digital sound effects in our game while our game can still play. So we're going to have a look at how this works and we're going to do some samples today. So what is DMA? Well DMA stands for Direct Memory Access. This is where other hardware within the computer will access the memory, take data out of the memory and do something else with it. In this case it will use those as commands to program the sound chip for us. And this means the Z80 doesn't have to be involved in anything other than the initial setup of that DMA command. Now on the CPC the DMA for the sound requires the sample data to be in the basic 64K of memory. So on a 128K system or a system with a ROM cartridge, unfortunately we do have to have the sound samples within the basic 64K of the machine. Now the other thing with the Amstrad CPC is it's a very strict way that it works. The, a DMA command is taken at 15 kilohertz. The DMA takes a single command each time. Each command is one word, that's two bytes. And each command can change one register of the AY sound chip or do some of the commands, but we're just worrying about the AY for now. However, there are three DMA channels, and this means we can feed all three channels simultaneously. So if we wanted to change all three tones at the same time, we can do that. That's not going to be relevant today. We're only going to need to change one channel to do our digital wave. Now, one interesting thing is the AY sound chip has three channels, which are sometimes called A, B, and C, and the DMA has channel 0, 1, and 2. But don't think that channel 0 on the DMA has to control channel A, on the AY. Each DMA channel can change any sound channel, so DMA channel 0 could change different parts of the AY sound channels A, B and C. It's just because we can only change one register per DMA tick, it means we do need more than one to make a lot of change at the same time, but we're only going to use a single channel. Now like most things with the CPC Plus, to control the DMA we need to page in the CPC Plus registers. Now we've looked at that before but we're going to briefly look at it again today. When we do that a new bank of memory appears between hexadecimal 4000 and 7 triple F. It's not true memory, it sort of registers within the extra hardware of the CPC Plus. And there are some bytes in this area that control the DMA and we're going to look at those. Now the way the DMA works is we need a set of commands, kind of like a script, that tell the DMA what we want it to do. So these commands will appear in some memory in the first 64K and so what we need to do is we need to give the DMA the address of these commands we then need to tell it to start and if we want we might want to set a playback speed and these work with these registers here. So there are three channels, so there are three sets of registers for each channel and there's a DMA address as usual in little Indian format which is the normal Z80 format. So there's two bytes there and for channel 0 they're at hexadecimal 6C00 and 01 and for channel 1 they're at 6C04 and 05 and channel 2 there at 6C08 and 09. We're going to be using channel 0 in today's example. Of course these are all in the ASIC registers so we have to page in the CPC plus registers first. Now the prescaler is the speed. That only works in some cases and we'll discuss that later. This is at 6C02 in the example today but there's another one for channel 1 at 6C06 and another one for channel 2 at 6C08. There is also a control and status register. If we write to this we, it allows us to turn on the channels and that will start the DMA playing. So this is effectively our play command. However there may be cases we want to read from it and this is in the case of our interrupt handler, our normal interrupt handler at RST7. We might want to actually see what's caused the interrupt because you see the DMA channels can cause interrupts themselves. Because usually the interrupts would be caused by the screen being redrawn and it occurs six times on a normal CPC but on a CPC plus we can cause the interrupt at any line we wish. But there are also the ability for the DMAs to cause interrupts and the purpose of this would be if we're playing a sample and we want to know when the sample ends we can cause an interrupt at the end of the sample and then in our interrupt handler we can realize the sample's ended and start playing the next sample or even mix in real time the samples into a buffer of memory and that's one way that some people I believe have managed to save memory because unfortunately the DMA does use one word per command and so we're, even though we're only playing a four bit per sample file we're going to end up using potentially two bytes per sample so it's rather wasteful unfortunately. Anyway that control register appears at 6COF for both reading and writing so we're going to need that to turn our sound on. Now what kind of commands can we give the DMA to do? Well they're very simple. 
There's a load command. This effectively sets an AY register to a value. And all of the commands are two bytes. And so I've shown these in 16-bit format. And so the first nibble in the pair would be zero, followed by the register number, because the register numbers are all under 15. And then the value that we want to set to that register number. Now, if you don't know what register numbers to use, these are, of course, the standard AY register numbers. So please take a look either at my last tutorial or the Chibi Sound tutorial I did in the past, where I really went into detail about how the AY registers worked. Now, there's also a pause command. This starts with a, the top nibble of one. And then there are three nibbles, which are the amount of time to wait. Now, we can change this because whatever we put in here is multiplied by the prescaler value plus one. So effectively, if we write zero to the prescaler, we're running at normal speed. But if we write a one, then we're running at half speed. And so we can do some basic pitch changes here. And this might be useful because, as I said, the DMA is running at 15 kilohertz, which is quite a high sample rate. If we want to lower down to eight kilohertz, we can put a prescaler of one in and slow things down a bit. The important thing to notice is though, prescalers slowing down only work on pause commands. None of these other commands are affected by the prescaler at all. Now, we do have the ability to perform loops, and we are going to try this later. So what we can do is we can define a repeat. This is the start of the loop. So this is effectively the equivalent of saying for i equals 0 to n. And the definition of the command is the top nibble is a 2, and then there are three nibbles that are the n in that loop. We have a no operation, which just does nothing for a tick, effectively the same as a pause of 0. We also have the loop command, which is the end of the loop. So this is effectively our next command. This will then jump back to the repeat for as many times as we defined at the start. Then we have the interrupt command. This is defined by hexadecimal 4010 here. And this will effectively cause an interrupt to occur in the same way as a usual interrupt caused by a screen. And this would be intended for us to check what caused the interrupt by reading from 6COF here. And if we detect that the DMA has caused the interrupt, then we would want to probably restart that channel or something. The final command, hexadecimal 4020, is very important. That's the stop command. That's the end of the sound sample. So this will stop the DMA, and it will do nothing until we restart it again. OK, so that's really all of the theory out of the way. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the actual source code. Now, recently, I've been using Vassam and Notepad++ for my examples. But this time, we're actually going to go back to WinApe. There's a good reason for this. My Vassam tutorials all start their source code at hexadecimal 8000. This was sort of constant to all of my tutorials. However, we need an awful lot of memory to run today's example. So we're going to start at hexadecimal 400. That's the origin here. And so that's why we're using WinApe rather than Vassam, which would be my preference, really. Now, I do know that some people often complain about the small fonts on WinApe. I apologize for this. I mean, WinApe doesn't allow you to change fonts, really. I've actually had to hack the executable to get them this big. So if you're struggling to read, I'd suggest the old Red Dwarf solution of just moving your head closer to the object, maybe. But um, if you can't see it, download the source code and zoom it in as much as you want. Anyway, I'm doing my best. Please bear with me. So here's the source code today. So we're starting at hexadecimal 400. So we've got lots of nice memory for our massive sound sample we're going to play later. Now, the first thing we need to do is turn on the CPC+. Plus. The CPC+, plus is turned on by this command here. We have to write a weird set of codes that have no special meaning to the gate array to tell the system we're allowed to use the, the CPC++ plus functions. Then what we do is we send these bytes here, and we out B8 to port 7F here, and that will turn on the memory. So at this point, 4,000 to 8,000 is no longer normal memory. It's now these registers. And what we do next is we are going to use a DMA list here. This is our command. So we've got a very simple command here. Let's take a look at it. So the first command here is setting the AY register, register 7, to 3D. This is turning on the mixer, because AY7 is the mixer. And we are turning on channel 2, which on the CPC is the middle channel. What we're doing next is we are setting AY register 9 to maximum volume. This is channel B again. And then what we're doing is we're setting AY register 3, the high part of the pitch, to a middle tone. And then we're setting a stop command. So all we're doing is we're turning on the sound, maxing out the volume, setting the tone to the middle, and then finishing. So we're just going to make a beep. This is really our bog basic, simplest example possible. And it's not that simple because we've got all this initialization, but just bear with me on that. So that's what we're doing here. So we're loading in the DMA list into HL. And then we're just storing it at 6C00, which, if you remember, is 
the address for channel zero to define the DMA data. So that's that here. So now we've defined our data. We've actually got some playback speed commands here, but I'm going to run those out. We don't need these for such a simple example. But what we do need is to set the control register. And so we're loading bit zero with a one here and sending this to 6CRF, which is our control register. And that is to turn on channel zero here, which is the channel we're using. At this point, we're basically done. So all we do is we page out the plus registers and we return. We only need to page out the plus registers here because we're going back to basic. So let's assemble this and see what happens. So we can hear a tone now, so that example has worked okay. So if I just reset this here, and now what we'll do is we'll run this again. So that was just a very simple example just with this crude constant beep here. But what we want to do now is we want to do something a bit more advanced. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the hello sample. Now I should have said that these do need to be byte aligned here for the DMA to work correctly. So we're using an align command here to make sure everything's on an even byte boundary. And we're going to use this hello sample here. Now, as with last time, I've converted this with my Chibi Wave program. Here it is. Now, the format is different because essentially what Chibi Wave is doing in this case is it's converting the file not just to a 4 bit file, but it's actually using the AY registers to constantly change the volume. So it's outputting words in the correct format for the DMA. And so we've got the CPC plus DMA option. And what it's also doing is it's detecting if two consecutive wave heights were the same and it's converting those to a pause. And so this, this has two benefits. Firstly, it actually reduces the file size by about 50%, but it also means that we can slow the playback down by using the playback speed option, because remember, the prescaler only works on pause commands. And so because we've got those pause commands in there as a space saving, we can now use that slowdown and it will roughly work. It won't necessarily be completely even because if the wave is constantly changing, then there'll be no pause commands for it to affect. But from what I can hear, it sounds pretty good. So let's try that out now. So what happened there? Well, you heard the wave sample played three times, but I also made a very careful point of pressing the A key as it did. The point is that even though the wave sample was playing, BASIC was working just fine and there was no reduction in speed. That's because of the DMA. Of course, if we did this example directly controlling the AY sound chip, we'd be using all the Z80's power, so we wouldn't have been able to return until the sound was done. Now, also, it played three times. Why did it play three times? Well, I've put a loop in. If you remember, 2002 here is a the start of a loop here. And the, the top nibble being a 2 means that we are doing a repeat. And then the bottom nibble being a 2 means that we are repeating twice. If we change this to 2001 and run again. Now we just heard it twice. Because whatever the loop count is, plus 1 is the amount of times it will repeat. And then we've got the loop command here, which jumps back to the start. And we've got our end command here. So that's how we can play a WAV file using the DMA. Now, of course, a lot of the work here is being done by the Chibi Wave converter, but effectively all the Chibi Wave converter is doing is it's putting this header command in here, and then it's putting a large sequence of these volume commands with the volume nibble being whatever the waveform requires. So there's not really anything that is being done that's particularly clever in there. But if you're interested, as always, you can download the source to Chibi Wave and today's example here. On my, from my website, it's all in the sources.7zip. So please go ahead and check that out if you want to see it. Now, as an added bonus, let's just try out that other sound sample I have, which is the various sound effects. So there they are. And of course, as I said before, we can change the playback speed by altering the prescaler here. If we put a playback speed of one, we're effectively going to halve the speed. So we're going to play these samples back now at eight kilohertz. So they're playing back rather too slow there. But what we could do is if we correctly outputted these with the Chibi Wave converter, rather than using a frequency down sample of three here, if we changed it to six, and we just selected our file, 
this would effectively convert to approximately 8 kilohertz. And so that would now, if we exported that and then used it, it would play at the correct speed with the prescaler of 1. But anyway, that's the basic example. I think we've covered all of the commands here and shown you a rough example of how to get things started. Of course, you're welcome to download this and just have a play. If you wanted to use multiple channels simultaneously, or if you wanted to use a buffer, you could define an area of memory and then start filling the bytes into that area in, in your interrupts or whatever. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. We're going to continue with wave playing next time as well. We're going to move on to some of the other systems. We'll have a look at the ZX Spectrum next. The ZX Spectrum, of course, is a beeper system, so it's got very basic audio, but we can still make it do waves pretty well. Anyway, thanks for watching today, and goodbye.